and welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be reviewing the Hot Toys Marty McFly figure from Back to the Future. Um, so here's a look in the box. You got a really cool Back to the Future logo on the front and the sides you have different artwork continuing that classic logo and a picture hinting at the DeLorean that's going to be coming up I think next year which I think a lot of people are excited for including myself and then taking a look you have the awesome Hot Toys artwork that they usually include of the DeLorean itself with all the different time periods that they went to in the movie and the clock tower of course and then our first look at the figure and here's our first look at the figure in the box something to note that's kind of cool is on the uh, inside box you have this kind of uh, retro color design around the edge it's a cool little detail that they added that they didn't need to do and it's just awesome and as you can see this figure comes with quite a few accessories i love it so starting out with the less exciting accessories, you have two extra joints for the hands. And you also have two extra, or actually a couple of extra buttons in case the buttons fall off the figure. Since they're so small and you can easily lose them, Hot Toys tends to include extras that you can glue on to replace the lost ones. You also have the classic retro style watch. That he wears in the movie. You got some button dials on the bottom here, and then you have what looks like a screen, a digital screen right here. And you basically just slide this on the wrist and then put the hand over it. And then you have the retro style portable CD player here. And it's slightly bendable. And it looks really cool. How's that? Basically looks like it is a real headset. And you have the wires, which are actually real wires, so they bend and stay in place. And it continues on to the cassette holder itself. And what's so cool about this, uh, the detail on this part is, you know, you have like details on the sides, you know, on the front here, looks like a play button, a stop button, and fast forward and stuff like that. So on all angles of this um, accessory, you have details. And what's really cool is they, made the front part see-through so that you can actually see where a cassette would go and I think that's really awesome. Kind of strange that there's no cassette in there but still really cool. And you have a printed logo on here and some type of, I don't know what that is, but yeah, it looks great. And then you also have a retro style camera. You have the speaker here, the lens, you have details on all sides. The strap on mine is starting to come undone. So I'm going to glue that part back. But yeah, as you can see, there's details, buttons, and just different things on each side, especially on this side. And you have a grip on top. But yeah, it looks really great. And you have his backpack, which actually has functional zippers. You have two zippers that can work. They're a bit tricky to work with, but yes, they do work. Now this was actually stuffed with cotton. I'd put some foam in it to, for like books to make it more realistic, to make uh, the filling of it just look more natural, like he has books in the backpack instead of just like overstuffed cotton. Um, but yeah, as you can see, you have some nice threading work, some stitching and all that stuff. Yeah, the backpack holder on top here, the backpack strap, which is adjustable. And yeah, overall, just a lot of different intricate uh, stitching work and details. I mean, it looks just like a real backpack, basically. And you have a larger accessory than usual, the skateboard. You actually have real screws in here, which is awesome. You have printed decal on the side. You have some texturing on here. And you have movable wheels with uh, texture, like, I guess, dirt or whatever that might represent in the movie and then texture and decal details on the bottom as well. So yeah, it looks pretty much just like it did in the movie. And you have, for the first time that I've ever seen with a Hot Toys figure, uh, other than the alien Ripley figure, 
you have a Hot Toys animal. Uh, so the, in this case being Einstein the dog from Back to the Future. And a lot of people complain that this uh, dog doesn't look that realistic compared to other Hot Toys, you know, accessories and figures. And it's like, yeah, you know, it might not be perfect, but then you have to ask yourself, how hard is it to actually make a realistic sculpted dog with the paintwork and everything and mass produce that? I mean, we're talking about something that's quite difficult. Um, and the so called the head actually is slightly articulated. I'm assuming you probably take the head off because with the, uh, the upcoming Doc Brown Hot Toys figure, the Einstein in those photos is wearing the timer around his neck. So I think you probably have to remove the head in order to attach that. That's just my guess. But look, I think the paintwork isn't bad. I mean, you got some really nice shading here from light to dark and then light again. And in the appropriate areas too. You have to think about it. Like if they were to do this in like rooted hair, for example, imagine how, how difficult, time consuming and hard that would be to mass produce. I think that's why they went with sculpted look because uh, I feel like it's just the only practical way to really pull this off. You know, unless you have like a few one-time commission work stuff where you do rooted hair but if you're doing a mass production and you're trying to do rooted hair on an entire figure like this i'm just not sure how practical that really is um, but look i don't think it looks bad um it's decent under certain lighting and from a distance and so in terms of the hands you have quite a bit of a variety um, you have like a force push hand it looks like which yeah i'm joking but not a lot of texture on this. It's smooth, but I guess that's what you would expect. Marty McFly was young in this movie, so you wouldn't expect a lot of wrinkles or veins or anything like that. So, I mean, I think it's pretty uh, accurate to how you would expect this hand to look. And then you have, like, a hand that I guess could hold the camera uh, here. So you could probably just have him hold the camera like so. And there you go. And you have another hand which, uh, I don't know. I mean, y'all tell me, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what this hand could be used for. I mean, I guess maybe it could be used for the camera as well. Um, like right here, maybe. I don't know, you tell me. Or the newspaper too. You can have it like this. And you also have a, another hand that's kind of a strange, strangely posed hand. This also looks like it's probably for the camera, maybe. I'm not, honestly, I'm really not sure. My mind is blanking on me, so. But yeah, um, you can use this for, for whatever either way. Uh, actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, maybe the skateboard. Maybe that's what this is. Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, so you can use this hand to hold the skateboard. Or the backpack. And there's another hand with the same style, just on the opposite hand. And you have this hand, which is more of a closed fist hand with an opening to hold just different accessories. So like the camera, the skateboard, or the backpack. You have two standard relaxed hands that look the same on either side. And then of course you have the stand, which is just a standard, like I call these usually a throwaway stand because other than the logo, I mean, there's not really anything special about it. Standard hook stand. These stands to me are just kind of boring. There's not really much to them. There's no diorama cool stuff with it. So it's like, yeah. And then lastly, you have the famous newspaper uh, for Save the Clock Tower. So you actually have real newsprint on here. So you can read some of this. Clock tower struck by lightning. Clock stopped at 10.04. The Hill Valley Pres Preservation Society. Uh, please make donations to... And then the... And there's a picture, of course, of the clock tower and the fine print. You, can, you can't really read this tiny print, but you can kind of read this small headliner here. Um, but yeah, that's a really cool thing. You know, what's even cooler is you have the famous written uh, words by Marty McFly's love interest in the movie. You have her phone number right there, what she wrote down in her handwriting. And that's just so awesome that they included that. I feel like they didn't even have to. It doesn't even feel like something they would include, but wow, that's amazing. But even at the same time, I'm not surprised because Hot Toys always, they usually go above and beyond with their uh, accessories and details. So I um, imagine this is probably printed on. Um, I can't imagine writing, handwriting that over and over again. But I don't know. I mean, it looks awesome either way. 
And here we have the Marty McFly figure in full form, uh, starting with the front and then the side and then the back. So let's go to the head sculpt and see how accurate this is. So there's mixed opinions on how well this head sculpt looks like Marty McFly from Back to the Future or Michael J. Fox, the actor who portrayed him. Um, some people say that this does look like him and other people say that he doesn't. Um, some people say that the original head sculpt looks better from the 1.0 version of this figure compared to the 2.0 version that we're looking at right now. I don't know, I mean, I haven't seen the 1.0, I've seen it in videos and pictures, but I haven't seen it in person. But uh, to me at least, I think, I mean, just looking at it in hand and in person, I feel like this head sculpt is pretty accurate. I feel like this does look like how Marty McFly looked in Back to the Future 1. And I do see Michael J. Fox's resemblance, um, especially from certain angles and with certain lighting. So yeah, I mean, I think, especially like from angles, like from above and with the lighting is from above the head, I feel like it looks even more like Michael J. Fox. And the lighter skin complexion, I feel like is more accurate to how he looked in the movie. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but there's a lot of skin texture on this head sculpt. And so that's really nice. It looks very realistic. And yes, the head sculpt is a separate piece from the neck. And the neck also has skin texturing detail as well. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is there. And so the neck is also separate from the body. So you have a lot of posability. So let's talk about the tailoring of this uh, figure. I have to say, if I'm most impressed by anything on this figure, it's definitely the tailoring work. You have multiple layers. You have this life preserver style jacket um, with buttons and a wire in this part right here. So you can pose it in different ways. And it has like padding. So you have that effect. You have a very similar, if not the same material that this jacket was made of in the movie. And it just gives it so much more authenticity. And the fact that you actually have functioning pockets is even better. And of course, underneath that, you have this other classic style jacket with tailoring work on the inside. So you have pr the accurate printing on the inside. You have a functional pocket on the inside here. And all these extra buttons. So like, oh yeah, these are the buttons that he has in the movie, guitar and other different style buttons, a guitar pick. So that's really cool. These pockets on the outside also are functioning. And you have all these just intricate details like the buttons here, the collar, all finely sewn together. And so it's really awesome. I like it. And then underneath that you have this uh, uh, undershirt, a button up shirt with buttons as well. Functional pockets on both sides. And under that even you have a red shirt that he wore when he was at the high school, when he was back in time, which is a stretchable material and has the same texture that it had in the movie, even the collar. So that's really cool. And these buttons are functional. You can actually unbutton these and button them back up because they are functional plastic pieces. And you have the suspenders that he wore in the movie as well. You have metal, a uh, metal uh, ring type thing here, which is actually a die cast piece. And this is a stretchable material. You can, looks like you can kind of adjust it maybe, or actually maybe not. And this as well, you can unhook these if you wanted to. And so, yeah. And yes, of course, the life preserver style jacket is removable in addition to this blue jacket and the button up undershirt. So you could have the look that he had when he was in the high school with this red shirt. And continuing on downward, you have uh, some old style jeans, which are Velcroed on. You have the uh, belt loops and all that stuff. Functional pockets, which is awesome. Uh, you got the right texture and feel for these jeans and the right tailoring work in terms of where the stitching patterns are. And you have functioning pockets on the back as well. Belt loops, I believe, on the back. Yes. And then moving on to the shoes. You have some tennis shoes, which look very uh, well done. I like how there's slight wear and tear to them. Like they're not perfectly clean. There's some slight dirt effects on them. And even cooler, you have socks that are real socks. They are functioning. And so yeah, that's awesome. And even some details and texturing on the bottom of the shoes. Since the neck is a separate piece from the body and the head, you do have more flexibility. You can move the head forward about that far 
which is actually really far compared to most Hot Toys figures. So that is awesome. And you can move the head back really far as well. Again, I like how it's a separate piece because it gives you way more flexibility and options for posing. Uh, you can move it to the side that far <coughs> and to the side. And of course at angles as well. It's a bit stiff, but yes, you can push this neck and head to the limit. The shoulders will vary depending on how many layers you have, but with all these layers, you can push it up about 90 degrees and you can push the shoulder forward about the same 90 degrees and you can push the shoulder back a little bit over 90 degrees and you can actually kind of do 360. I wouldn't do it because it's going to make the material bunch up and then it's going to turn into a mess like it is right now. Um, so. All right, and then the elbow, you can push, it's a double jointed double, so you can push it all the way as far as the material allows. Again, if you remove the jacket, you'll probably push it farther, and you can only move it back that far, as you expect with an elbow. The hands are just standard ratcheted. Uh, you can actually push them pretty far and they won't fall off, which I like. I want more Hot Toys hands to be like that, because they're often, some of the other figures are kind of frustrating. Um, so yeah, uh, the chest, and stomach have a separate joint. You can push forward about uh, that far. And you can push back farther than you would expect. And you got a swivel. And that's actually in the waist area, I think. Or no, maybe, no, it's in the stomach and chest, so. So that's cool. And then the, in terms of the hips, uh, you can push the leg up 90 degrees, a little bit over 90 degrees and back a little bit, but not too much. The knee, you can push. It's not ratcheted, but it is double jointed, so you can push it really far back and only a little bit forward, not really much at all. In terms of the feet, since they're not boots, you can actually, surprisingly, you can't push them too far without them coming off of the joint. So yeah, that's, you can't really do too much on that. You can push them up a little bit though and side to side and of course turn 360. So the way that you attach the headphones here you just take the head sculpt off and then you take the headphones and you place them over the neck like so and hold it in place and then you just pop the head sculpt back on and there you have Marty McFly with the classic retro headphones on and you can just put this Walkman in his hand or you could even put it in one of these pockets if you wanted to because it would fit nice and neat. Um, so I think I'll do that. And then you can adjust the wires since they are posable like so. And then adjust the jacket. And then you have the classic look. So in terms of my overall thoughts about this figure, you know, Back to the Future is a nostalgic classic movie that's really retro and awesome and that, you know, I watch every now and again. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite movie of all time, but it's definitely a really iconic movie that sticks in my mind and I think it's always so cool when Hot Toys branches out from the mainstream Marvel, DC, and Star Wars figures and I want to support that so I not only bought this for nostalgic reasons but also because I want Hot Toys to do more fringe figures if you will even though this isn't really fringe because this is still a very iconic character mainstream back to the future like it's pretty popular um, uh, and there was three movies and so I feel like uh, it's not like maybe it's like the same thing as Star Wars but at the same time it is very iconic and endearing in pop culture and so I'm really I'm really thankful that Hot Toys made this character and is making these figures. I hope they continue to release more. I think it'd be awesome to have other characters. Um, so that's what drew me to this figure is just the nostalgia factor and not only that but if we want to talk positives here the tailoring work. I mean, it's just so impressive and so cool because you get all these superhero characters and, you know, characters from other universes and stuff like Star Wars. And, you know, it's it's out there. It's not really relatable somewhat, but not really. It's it's kind of uh, hyper realism. It's or exaggerated and it's fantasy. But this is like an interesting Hot Toys figure because it's based in clothing that exists in real life. And that's another thing that really caught my attention. Because if Hot Toys is so great at making the costumes accurate from the other movies with fantasy characters, imagine how awesome and realistic it would be to have a character that has clothes that exist in real life. Like the jeans, the, 
you know, the life coat preserver style jacket, the classic jean style jacket, and the uh, the Walkman or, or the backpack, everything. I just think it's so cool, and I was like, wow, that'd be awesome to have, you know, just and the multi-layering of it and just the impressive details in the tailing work, the functionality that, you know, I feel like you hardly ever see on any other toy company or figure of this scale. Like Hot Toys is the only one I really know that has like functioning, accurate to scale clothing. And so I was really impressed by that. And so those are all the reasons why I got this figure. And you have just so many cool retro accessories that are also really nostalgic. Like you have the Walkman, the classic headphones. You have the video camera, old style. Uh, the backpack, maybe semi-retro, I don't know. And so yeah, I mean, those are really cool things just to have too. And the fact that this new 2.0 version came with Einstein the dog, even though it's maybe not be the most realistic accessory ever, still really awesome that they included and I'm glad that they did. Um, I have no problems with it. Technical positives, I'm glad they, they put a wire in the Life Preserver style jacket. I'm glad they made everything functional with the buttons and pockets. I think those are all bonuses. I think the shoes look very realistic and I'm glad they got some wear and tear and dirt on them. The real socks is a bonus. The head sculpt is spot on. Uh, the hair is the only thing that kind of stands out as slightly negative on the head sculpt. It, the paintwork just seems almost slightly off on the hair. I don't know what it is. It just... Maybe the front part just looks slightly painted and not as realistic as usual. But overall, I still think the head sculpt stands out as a really great head sculpt and looks like Marty McFly from that movie. Yeah, so those are all the positives that I can think of. Um, let me know if you have any other positives in the comments section below. Um, in terms of negatives, the only negatives I can think of, maybe there it would have been cool to have the accessory of the sunglasses. I mean, I believe they showed the sunglasses on the... Uh, on the box, right? I, I believe so on the box art. And I mean, they're just kind of iconic. They're on the poster of the movie. So, you know, like why not include the sunglasses? And the biggest miss for me, the 1.0 version came with an electric guitar. And I get that they're trying to do a 2.0 and change it up and they're including Einstein. But instead of just trading Einstein the dog for the electric guitar, why not still include the electric guitar? I mean, really make this a 2.0. I mean, really make it the best Marty McFly Hot Toys figure ever, you know? So I just don't get why they didn't include an electric guitar. I just feel like that's such an iconic thing that was with the 1.0 and you don't get it with a 2.0. Like I, if the 2.0 is supposed to be an improvement of the 1.0, why don't we have, why do we have one less accessory than the 1.0? So that really bothers me. Cause then I have to like try to hunt down and maybe the only way I can get that electric guitar is either buy it separately for a overpriced, price or I have to buy an overpriced 1.0 version which neither of which I really want to do. So I'll probably just end up buying a third party 1.6 scale electric guitar instead or maybe not even. I might even bother. I just think that was a huge miss when they had in the 1.0 and not the 2.0. As far as any other accessories they could have included I can't really think of anything else at the moment. I'm sure there are maybe some other ideas. Uh, if you have some let me know down in the comments below. What would your ideal accessories be to include with this ex uh, with this figure? Um, let me know. I uh, like this figure. I do not regret buying it. I'm excited for the release of Doc Brown. I can't wait for that one to come in. It's up on for pre-order for me. So And the DeLorean. So cool that they reissued that. I'm excited for that as well. I don't think anyone, uh, if you like this movie, I don't think you'd regret buying it. Um, it's pretty spot on. And But if you have this figure or thinking about it, let me know what you think. And I want to hear your opinion in the comments below, and until the next video.